Can I get a drink of that? Mr. Gillespie, please report. No way, man. You know the drill. Oh, come on, this was nothing. I'm really thirsty. No, are you thirsty? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, Captain. Jeez, Ron, cover your mouth, will you? Hey, you all right? You don't look so good. Piece of cake when you're used to swallowing bowl and balls. We'll crunch numbers on the three best sites. Well, one little island wasn't too bad. You know what? The beachfront reminds me of our resort on Lanai. Man, this is one hot night. Yeah, it's the Hawaiian Islands. It's generally hot here. Look, we'll switch in Honolulu. I doubt they'll even notice the difference. <coughs> Jeez, Ron, cover your mouth, will ya? <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm feeling a little lightheaded. <sighs> Give me a minute, okay? A minute. He's furious. Yep. It's gonna be a pleasant flight. At least it's only an hour. <laughs> an hour with an irate Clayton Durrell is like a week at the dentist. Yeah. Jesus. Ron. What is it, man? I don't know. I feel kind of funky. Easy, man. Easy. What? Oh, oh, Bill, we're in trouble. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bill? Run. Bill. Bill. We screwed up. Please. Oh, yes, thank you. You doing all right? <clears throat> and your seatbelts, gentlemen? Please put your bags under your seat. Thank you. Hi. Hi, sorry. Thanks. Seatbelts, thanks. <laughs> Cruising altitude will be 23,000 feet. Present conditions in Honolulu. Clear skies of 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Same for the next few days. Please relax and enjoy your flight. You're in the Navy? Yes, I am. Lieutenant Dave Thatcher. Jay Malay. Jay. That's an interesting name. Well, when I was born, we lived in Toronto in an area called Little India. So it's Hindu. I guess I should be thankful it was important in the 60s, then I'd be Rainbow or Sunshine or Avatar Bliss. Oh, thank God for small mercies. It's an okay name. It means prayer. Hmm. All right. Beverage? Um, yeah, cola, please. Sure. I don't know. I think the third property we looked at in Glen and Maui. <coughs> I don't know. I see a problem with the local transportation, though. But we dealt with that. Uh, I remember. Oh, Jesus.
Hey, Steven. I, I was wondering if I could be of any assistance. You look really, really sick. Uh, really? You a doctor? Matter of fact, I, uh, I am. <laughs> oh, well. Where'd you intern, Doc? Johns Hopkins. No shit. I heard. My Uncle Dan's head cardiologist there. Uh, you must know him. Dan Smythe? Oh, yeah, I know Dan. He's a great guy. It's your trip, asshole. You like playing doctor? The only Dan Smythe I know is in the Banditos, and he's doing a life stretch for a double homicide. Go play doctor somewhere else before you need a real one. I know in the islands you get awful sick sometimes from Yeah, like, like pneumonia. If you've been stranded on the beach a couple of days after surfing. Pneumonia. Thanks, Pam. I'm dying of thirst. Could I have a big glass of water? Sure. Could you bring up a pitcher? It's real dry in here. How's the Humidex? It's normal. Waikiki Beach, the Maui location. What about, um... Okay, yeah, I've, I've got this down. I need you to take it. No, something, uh... Very strange just happened. Uh, there's a guy back there in economy. Well, the same guy with a leopard unit on. He's bleeding. Bleeding? Bleeding? Bleeding. He's bleeding. Okay, I talked to him. He told me he's got pneumonia. He's bleeding from his fucking eye. Pneumonia doesn't do that. Well, no kidding. I mean, I've heard of sweating. You can perspire. Your lungs get screwed, but not bleeding. Nancy, turn around. Coffee's cold. Press the button or something. Aw, oh, great. Control. Planes on autopilot. Stole what? What man? A, a vial. A vial of what? <laughs> 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 Pam! Oh my god. Okay, back up. Back up. Give him some room. I'm a doctor. This man's dead. Keep everybody calm. We'll be in Honolulu soon. Oh, it's best that you stay in your suits. There's no need for alarm. Uh, we'll be oh. soon. Hey, there's a doctor on board. Good. Please, please stay calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. It's all the commotion back there. Okay? He's dead. Who's dead? Honolulu Control, this is Sunray Flight 335. We have an emergency. Do you read me? Flight 335, this is Honolulu Control. What's the problem? Control, we have an in-flight fatality. Uh, we may have some kind of a bug on board. Flight 335, move to frequency 122, and we will secure. Copy. Heading for 122, roger that control. Gord, what's going on? One of the passengers just died. It looked as if he'd hemorrhaged up half of his organs. The last thing he said was something about uh, stealing from a, from a lab. A disease? <sighs> Control, this is 335, copy. Honolulu Control, this is flight 335. Come in, please. What 
is it? Uh, he told me, miss, uh, that he had pneumonia. And the blood is very dark. It's arterial. That's right. What does it mean? It means the normal flow of blood in the body is going awry. How can that happen? There are many reasons. What happens is the blood lining the walls of the lungs becomes heavier and bursts into the lung itself. And essentially, you drown. Before he died, he said something about stealing. And a lab, and he mentioned a vial. It could be a virus. In a closed space like this plane's an ideal environment for a virus to thrive in. Outside, they tend to die before they can find a host. Is there anything else it could be? Well, I don't know. There's so many factors involved. In now, I'm not an immunologist. This is arterial blood. If it happened this fast, it has to be viral. How long to Honolulu? This is so irresponsible. Half an hour. Plane. Well, you, you should contact Los Angeles and the CDC. The what? The Center for Disease Control. Now we should talk to the pilots. Captain, this is Dr. Yamada and Lieutenant Thatcher. Gentlemen, it looks like we have a problem. Uh, Pam, take care of our passengers. Keep them calm. What happened? Some kind of bug? I'm not sure. Maybe we should drop the oxygen masks. Get the people back there some clean air. Well, it's too late for that now. This is a totally enclosed space. Uh, well, viruses leave us in nuclei, droplets, coughing, sneezing, even breathing. We've been on the plane, what, maybe uh, half an hour? It'll have infected everyone. Well, Dave is right. About 15 years ago, there was a spate of deaths in a harvest community in Southern California. Migrant workers. And they all lived in tents, an atmosphere very similar to this. Now, people who entered those tents for a minute were infected. Flight 335, come in. <coughs> this is 335. Go ahead. We want you to sit tight. We're setting up comm links with Los Angeles and the Center for Disease Control. It's going to be about five minutes. Copy. Copy that. We have a doctor on board. Roger that. We'll set up for him. Stand by. Standing by. Could I have everyone's attention, please? I have some distressing news for us all. Uh, we may have some sort of virus on board. Virus? What do you mean a virus? The man that got sick, did he say he had some kind of virus? Please, let me finish. Now, I am going to tell you everything that I know, which isn't much. Excuse me, I think I heard you're a doctor, is that right? Yes. Uh, I'm not currently practicing. I'm a coroner in the city of Sacramento. A coroner? Oh, that's... That's terrific. What a nice practical joke that is. You might come in real handy in about 20 no, minutes. I practiced medicine for five years. Good, and then you became a, a stiff doctor. Say a another word. You'll find your tongue in your pocket. OK. Look, some of the things we need to watch for are thirst, nosebleeds, and dizziness. Are we going to get sick? That I do not know. I let the passengers know what's going on. Look, this guy looked fine when he got on. Maybe this virus, or whatever it is, turns catastrophic only in the final phase. What are you saying? This guy could have been sick for days or weeks. Who knows what the incubation period is? Uh, what was that about incubation? A virus lies dormant before it comes to life. How long does that last? Well, I mentioned that outbreak among the migrant workers. That was anthrax. But I've read about engineered viruses that have an incubation period of less than three hours. So we can all get sick. Look, we're going to be in Honolulu soon. But... But what? I don't think Honolulu has the facility to deal with this. Chadwick, Center for Disease Control. Frank Conroy, what have you been told? I was alerted to a possible viral outbreak aboard a plane over the Pacific. Is that true? Yes. 
Uh, I'm not clear why I've been dragged out of bed. I'm just the Los Angeles lab director. If this is real, Atlanta should be involved, and we should have U.S. Army Medical Services on board. I agree, Miss Chadwick. The CDC never should have been involved. This is more a national security matter than health-related. But since you're in the loop, we'd like you to stay the whole way through. The Army may be brought in later. Um, who's we exactly? I'm the director of special operations with the National Security Commission. Has Atlanta been called? <sighs> Tag hunt. Uh, Lord Chadwick, Center for Disease Control. How are things on the plane? Things are bad. Now look. Not only is it dangerous, but it's against airline policy. I know, I travel all the time. If a kid has chicken pox or the measles, they don't let him on the plane. That is their job, to protect people like you and people... What's going trying on? trying to figure that out right now. They do not let them on the plane. It's happened to me countless times. I fly first class all the time. Sir, it is time to take your seat. I want to ask you, why would you let that man on the plane? He was sneezing on me. I will answer all your questions when you take a seat. Sit down and do what? Die like that bozo in the back with a blue blanket the on him? The captain and the pilot on board are doing their best right now. They're not doing nothing. We're six miles up in here. No, wait, I'm not done hey. with you. I want to know your last. Hey, hey, Come on. Middle America, wakey, wakey. Because I'm telling you right now, when I land, I am suing their ass. Oh, sit Please. down. Really in the shit. To your aircraft. Tell them really the shit. Really in the shit, and I Tell hope you all know it. And I want to make sure that two or three of you people know what's going on. That so is that when enough. we sign. Please take your seat. You are scaring people. We have a problem here. I don't have any answers, but you are causing more of a problem. I want your last name. There's a young girl back there alone. Do you mind if she uh, sits with you? Sure. Okay. Sure, yeah. Um, my name's Adam. Hi. I'll let her sit over there. Okay. Terry. Okay. Jay, huh? Can you come here for a minute? And that's Adam. I want you to sit with Adam and keep him company. Hi. How you doing? Jaya? Hi. I'm Adam. Whoa, that's a mean machine. Here, check this out. I've got a ton of games. You want to try? Come in, 335. 335, go ahead, Control. 335, we're not going to be able to land you here in Honolulu. Say again, Control. 335, we are unable to accommodate you here. Control Tower, this is Dr. Robert Yamada, one of the passengers. Why are we unable to land in Honolulu? 335, it wasn't our decision. You are to bear to Glen Ord Air Force Base, 200 miles north and east of Los Angeles. Roger that. Stand by for the new flight plan. Standing by. I better tell the passengers. I just spoke to ground control. Uh, we won't be able to land in Honolulu. What? Come on. Well, what do we... What? Why not? There's no biosecure location there. Bio what? Who cares? Who cares? We have to land this plane, yes? And do what? You tell me. You're the doctor. Just get off and let them let them deal with us. Maybe that's not such a bad idea. We don't know what's going on, but whatever it is, we can only deal with it in California. 
That is the only place we're getting off this plane. You're all patched and clean. You have dedicated communications with Sunray 335. That should do it. The comm links are open. 335 is all yours. This is Honolulu. Yeah. There they are. And no one can interfere? No. I've isolated their transponder signature. We're locked onto each other. They're the only thing that'll appear on this screen. Good job, Tack. You all right? We're hooked up to the uh, NSC now, Doc. You want to go to the cockpit? Just try and relax. Dave says we're linked. Well, are we? When did this happen? It just started. What about you? On any of those islands, there's never been anything remotely like this. I think we should continue to pursue this as if it were man-made. Is there something I should know? Hopefully you know what we're dealing with. That's what you're here for, isn't it? Right. <clears throat> well, whatever it is, it has an incredibly quick incubation period. Uh, do we know anything about the man that brought this on? We should know something more shortly. So when can I talk to this doctor? The control is working on it. Should be a couple more minutes. Stand by, 335. Standing by. They're in big trouble. The pilot's down. Coordinates? 23 latitude by 145 longitude. About three hours, 35 minutes away from the coast at their speed. Stations heard of anyone claiming responsibility. What about the passengers? We've nearly finished a second level profile on all of them, including the crew. With one exception, uh, the chance of any one of them having contact with the type of group that would plan an attack of this kind is near zero. Who's the exception? Naval intelligence officer. It's one of the Navy's young Turks. I think he's clean. What about the man they found dead? Criminal record. Drugs. He was traveling with someone who didn't get on the plane. Well, let's see if we can't find him. I don't like this, Ed. What the hell are they doing out there? It's one of the things that has us worried. There was an unusual number of uh, tourists. I don't know, maybe they were just looking for a vacation that was different. Well, I sure got that. Mm. Oh, you wanted this. That's every report on nerve gas, toxins, manipulated viruses, bacteria, synthesized fungoids that we've done in the last 15 years. Look, Ed, if this thing is real, I want a sample of it. I agree. But if we don't have a lot more information before that plane hits the coast, Help. 
Tears. Breathe. Scared. Breathe. You're scared. That's understandable. I'm scared too. Thank you. Like everybody's scared. Thank you. Let's see. Look. It's just a little bit. I'm Peter. Um, Peter Neely. What's your name? I'm Roberta. Pretty soon there won't be anyone to fly this plane. What about the, uh, what about the passengers? There might be a pilot on board. Yeah, you go out there, say hi, anybody on board and hunt a line of 737, there'll be pandemonium. Maybe you should start, uh, jotting down some of the basics. I'm gonna go see if anyone's up for a career change. She's on autopilot now. I'll, uh... <laughs> I'll write down the basics to keep us in the air. You better tell that controller what's going on here. Can I have your attention, please? I've got some bad news. As you know, the pilot is unable to fly the plane. I know it. We are so screwed, so, so screwed. We should have landed in Honolulu. There was a million pilots in Honolulu. You geniuses decided not to. If we landed in Honolulu, we weren't getting off the plane. That was the motivator for this little soldier into Los Angeles. What about the co-pilot? He's getting sick as well. Oh. My God. oh. Has anyone here ever flown a plane before? Terry. Terry, you gotta tell them. Okay, fine. I've flown a Cessna. Great. You don't get it. I cannot land a plane this size. Look, our options are pretty limited. There's no one else. No. I think you should go get instructions from the co-pilot right away. Okay. Go then. Great. Oh, great. <laughs> I got a fall. No, Clayton, you turn that on. You're going to interfere with navigation. I don't know where you've been, Nancy, the last couple of minutes. Maybe you've been a little bit vacant, but uh, there's a lot going on in this plane now, okay? We've got a lot of troubles. i got a lot more to worry about than whether I should turn on this goddamn cell phone or not. Clayton, don't. Don't, please. They told us not to. Nancy, pick up your phone. No. Pick up your phone. Turn it on. See if it works. one of his better days. 
Why do you work for him? Well, his company's one of the biggies in vacations and resorts. His company is what? Well, actually, I think his father started it. He just took it over a few years ago. There is a weird syndrome that the kids of successful parents have. It makes them complete assholes. <laughs> yeah, well, he has that in spades. <sighs> so why are you here? I mean, I'm, I don't want to pry or anything. No, I, I won't bother you if you don't have to answer. No, it's fine. I, uh... I was in a hospital for um, a depression back home. And about a year ago, I did something fairly stupid. You didn't. <laughs> yeah, I did. Mm. But I got over that. And, um, and I uh, figured I needed to change, so I came down here. <sighs> well, you're, you know, you seem so, you're so cool. <laughs> oh God. I wish she wasn't here. Honolulu phoned CDC first or she wouldn't be. At least she's all we've got to deal with. She's going through that disc you gave me. Is there any of our work on there? Old weapons. We haven't pursued this for a long time. If this is real, we could have a chemical weapon on our hands that nobody knows about all to ourselves. And you're going to let it land? I haven't made that decision yet. Co-pilot's down. I think your decision's made for you. What? Nothing. Who's flying the plane? Autopilot. Best bet is to bring him in and drop him in the ocean about 10 miles out. They got a chance at hitting at the right angle. Control, come in. This is 335. Who the hell is that? Let's find out. Three three five, go ahead. That is good news, 335. That bucket your inmate seemed pretty big, but she ain't far removed from a Cessna. Doesn't really seem like that. You're gonna do fine. I'm just gonna take you through a few of the basics before we take her off autopilot. Roger. These people are trying to be brave, but they're just very scared. Aren't you? Yeah, I am. You know, some of us aren't getting sick. That girl over there, the woman flying the plane. I don't feel like running a marathon or anything, but I'm okay. Yeah, well, we need to figure out why that is. What are you trying to get at, Doc? Well, I heard you talking to that young girl, naval intelligence. And? Well, this isn't uh, some military experiment gone wrong, is it? <laughs> okay, we don't have any time for this, but I will tell you. When there are maneuvers or an operation that involves all the armed forces. I'm the naval liaison with those other forces. That's what I do, okay? This man's dead. He's a hemophiliac. If he's a hemophiliac, his blood wouldn't thicken. No, but as long as the blood's in the veins, it's irrelevant, but... Right, that's right, that's terrific. Another one, fight the dust, Doc, for the blue blanket death back there. Uh, this man had a medical condition. This won't happen to us all. Bullshit. That is bull! That's the truth. It is not the truth! We are dead. Look, if we can make it to Los Angeles, which is only a couple of hours, we'll all be fine. 
if we make it to Los Angeles at all. I want you to ask them why they've killed our cell phones. What? Yeah, our phones are dead. Do you have one? Do you have a phone? Yeah? Try and turn it on. Try it. Is it working? Mine's dead. See, now, I don't think we're up in all the rules. Do you know something about this? Why are our phones dead? Relax. It's standard procedure. They don't want us panicking the world. <laughs> standard procedure? That's just bullshit, army boy. Hey, hey. It's Navy. And I need you to control yourself. Wait a minute. Hemophiliac. Taxinol. There's only one dose. There must be more in his luggage. Well, why would we want it? I mean, if it's a coagulant, don't we want the opposite? Well, we need something to alter our metabolism, to make it more difficult for this virus to take hold. Exactly. How do we get to the luggage? In the hold. There's a hatch in the cockpit, but it's not pressurized. All right. Let's give it a shot. What do you have for me? Well, it's pretty bizarre. I've taken the symptoms and mapped a theoretical viral agent's life in a human host. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, layman's terms. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, sometime before the plane gets over the United States, perhaps? Mm. Well, I've looked at a few things. First, pulmonary infections, which happen almost exclusively in arid, dry habitats. So we can rule that out? Actually, we can rule out most viral and bacterial candidates. Well, then we're back to square one. Not necessarily. What we're seeing up there resembles two things. First, hemorrhagic fever. But the incubation period of whatever is on that plane is much too quick, and the symptoms are off. No eruptions on the epidermis, and the bleeding is arterial. So what the hell is it? The only thing that it resembles is radiation sickness, which isn't viral. Look, Doctor, before I let those people off that plane, I need to be more certain than you sound. Of course you let them off. We're erecting a biosecure environment, which is perfectly safe. And I need to run some more tests, but... Excuse me! I need you to find the certainty in that computer. Or get the hell out! A passenger license for a Cessna? She's a pretty quick study. She may just be able to land that thing. How are they holding up? So so. They came up with a pretty interesting idea. There's some coagulants down in the hold. They want to go down and get them. Why? If the virus is thickening their blood, a coagulant would be an enormous help. That would make it thicker? No. Inside the body, it would act as a stabilizer. The cell would take what it needs to correct itself. That's a 737. I get extremely cold down in the cargo hold. Mm, we'll only be down there a minute or two. So it's extremely cold and the air is rarefied. You can only go down for two or three minutes. Now, I'll go down, but I need someone to go with me. Preferably two people. <clears throat> I'll go. Great. Oh, hell. I'll go along. Joe Carter. Excellent. Okay, yeah, let's go. I'll be back in a minute. Please be careful. All right, Terry, we're going to the hold. Okay. We go through one at a time. If we can't find the suitcase inside two minutes, then come back up, get warmed up, and start again. There should not be too much luggage down there, right? <clears throat> All right, we're 
Remember, the luggage is labeled Terzian. It's cold in here. <sighs> it's freezing in here. Take the back. Yeah, got it. Stay back now, stay back, stay back. You're all right. You're okay. You're okay. Huh? I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see what we got. Okay. Is this it? Oh, my God. That's it. That's it, isn't it? That's it. Jesus Christ. Did you get the drugs, 335? Affirmative. I'm going to turn you over to the doctor here. I should talk to him. We're going to pass you over to one of the doctors working on RN 335. Standing by, Colonel. Yes, hello. This is Dr. Chadwick. Time is critical right now, so I'm going to take you through everything I want you to do. We have to keep this thing at bay until we can reach help. Now, this is Taxanol. It's a, a coagulant. Hopefully, it'll slow this thing down, but we only have 12 doses. If we're going to make L.A., a few people are important. Terry's flying the plane. Dr. Yamada. Pam. We're going to give Jaya that young lady there one, too. Well, excuse me, but it isn't it based on looks, too? I mean, she looks fine, right? She looks fine to me. These decisions are based on a kind of fundamental morality. That's probably over your head. Whatever. Slots for everybody. There are five people back there who are still conscious. And they need this more than we do. Hey. Hey, just a minute. Okay? You're not the only one running this show. Those five people are gonna die. Let's share this amongst the people who are healthy. Clayton! Shut up. Just shut up! Am I the only one who is, who is speaking their mind how they really feel about this whole thing? It may be unfair. You know what? We should vote. I agree. But it's the three guys who went down into the hole to get that stuff that should do the voting. Now, I say we give it to the people who need it. How about you? That gets my vote. Voting's closed. Bunch of lemmings is what we have here. Okay, okay. And that leaves three 
dosages for the rest of us. So we've prepared some straws. The red straws get the Texanol. Pam, if you can pick one for me. Second red one. One more left. This is for you. Still, uh, there's still one left, right? No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. I had my hand on the other one. You saw that. You all, you all saw that, right? I mean, I had my hand on the other straw. You uh, have a good chance of surviving this little bout of the flu, but if you keep it up, you won't survive me. Thanks. All right. Just open it up and drink it. Sharon, it's hitting you. You need this more than I do. Let's split it. Oh, please, don't split the Taxanol. Anything less than a full dose is useless. Drink. and drink the whole thing, okay? All right? Mm-hmm. Good girl. You're getting sick. Oh. Don't even think about that. Just drink that up. You know, there are some times when pretending you're tough isn't such a good idea. This is one of them. Go ahead. to drink something. Mm. Come on now. Drink this all out. Drink the whole thing. That's great. Just relax. You 
open this and drink the whole thing. You open this and drink the whole thing. Sir. I'm gonna open this and you can drink this down now. Drink the whole thing. Would you be interested in selling that? I don't know. How much are you willing to pay? $10,000. Um, doctor, how much is one of these worth? I don't know. Buck and a half. Buck and a half. And you're going to pay me 10, 10 grand? Yeah. I'd, uh, I'd, uh, I have some in cash and a check, if you like. Okay. Although, um, I think I'd have to be kind of suicidal to sell this right now. Okay, look, how about, uh, $100,000? It's a few more zeros. $100,000, lots of, a lot of money. I think it's kind of low. Nobody's talking to you, all right? Uh, this is a deal between Peter and myself. $100,000. But Clayton, Dave's my advisor, and, uh, and so if he says it's too low, it's too low. $250,000. Stop this. That's enough. Come on, Clayton. You and I are barely getting sick. In fact, I feel great. We are trying to make a deal. I am talking about one quarter of a million dollars for you. This isn't fair. In fact, whatever you want. Pick your price. I just want this to be over with. Me too. Peter. Peter. Joseph. Mm -hmm. Here. And uh, thank you very much for helping me out downstairs. I can't take this. Joseph. <laughs> okay. Here. Your husband's a good man. I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Joseph, take it. You wanna hear something crazy? Sure. Okay. I came here because it's kind of where I grew up. My, um, my father had a sugar refinery on the Big Island. Mm -hmm. And I was happy then. I thought you were happy now. Y yeah, but I thought that coming here, I could get it together to, to face what happened to me last year. That's not crazy. That's not the crazy part. The crazy part is now I want to live so fucking badly it scares me. I've come up with something. I think I'm on the right track with radiation poisoning. We've had satellites scan the plane. No radioactive signature. What about at the genetic level? What? The disc you gave me. Four years ago, there was a theft of some DNA models from Menzies Cochrane. It's a tiny pharmaceutical company in Hawaii. DNA models? And it reminded me of Menzies. He was a geneticist. About eight years ago, he isolated a gene and modified it, calling it Menzies C5. He engineered it to combine with tritium. How does it work? In a nutshell, uh, it affixes to an element, in this case, tritium. And as the gene replicates, so does the tritium. Radiation poisoning. Exposure to over 4,000 rads destroys the human vascular system. Death is within hours. So it is a chemical weapon. Menzies created an antidote, C6. He never wanted it to be used as a weapon, so he never put it out. Well, that doesn't make any sense. 
bear with me. It does. Look, if someone on the plane was exposed to C5... Then they'd have C6. Not if they stole the C5. Uh, that's guesswork. This is what I do. I didn't just pull this out of a hat. If we take a look at all the backgrounds of the people on the plane, especially patient zero, he should fit a profile. Yeah. What, what is the problem? Prove it, doctor. Don't guess. Prove it. How did you learn to fly? I'm sorry. How did you learn to fly? Oh, my company bought a Cessna for business reasons. What do you do? Vice President, development for Eastern Winds Resorts. What about you? Why were you down in that far-flung corner of the islands? Well, I went there to scatter my wife's ashes. I'm sorry. And we met there. And what about you, Dave? Why were you down there? I'm based in Hawaii. It's not that far. You never really answer a question, do you? What do you want to know? Well, how do you know so much about viruses? You know as much as I do. And the taxanol was your idea. You're not really a doctor. You're a coroner. But we're lucky to have you. Excuse me. skilled at evading questions. Listen, I, I don't... Know I'm a taxi now. Because my lover used it to stop internal bleeding when his lungs were covered with Kaposi's lesions. I'm probably not getting sick because I'm on so many protease inhibitors bubonic plague couldn't survive my system. I know all about viruses because I've got one inside me, slowly killing me. Yeah, I'm sorry, I suspected you earlier. <laughs> it's okay. I don't even know what I'm being evasive. It's being in the Navy, you know. Don't ask. Don't tell. I'm gonna go see how some of the passengers are doing. If we live, this is our little secret, okay? Three, three, five. Come in, Dr. Yamada, come in. Dr. Yamada here, go ahead. Dr. Yamada, this is Dr. Chadwick again. I think I have an idea of what you're dealing with up there. And we're all ears. It's a type of radiation poisoning. Uh, negative control. There's no damage of the epidermis of any of the subjects. It's at the genetic level, doctor. Are you there? Uh, I'm here. Well, what are you talking about? I think patient zero was infected with a genetic strand. It's called Menzies C5. It's a splice of a gene in a tritium isotope. That fits. What kind of tools do you have up there, doctor? Nothing. Oh, damn. Radiation poisoning. We're talking about cerebral edema. More than that. Red and white blood cells are essentially becoming radioactive isotopes. Right. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you okay? I tried to take a breath. Come on. Go to the cockpit. 
You tell Dr. Chadwick, I'll get her the proof she needs. Control, this is Dr. Yamada. I think I may be able to give you some proof. How so, doctor? I've taken a sample of blood from patient zero, and I'm going to introduce it into a sample of mercury taken from the cabin humidex. Yes, that's excellent. What's going on? Mercury is a liquid metal. If this is just blood, then nothing will happen. Unless there's a radioactive isotope in here. Control. This is Dr. Yamada. The blood is completely contaminated with isotopes. The metal is in the early stages of breakdown. Dr. Yamada, that was very creative. Yeah, that's what we coroners do. And now you get creative. We're on it. I'm just going to check my element tables, but I think what he just did clenched it. Adam, I don't want you to die. <laughs> I don't want to die either, J.F. Are you scared? Yeah. I'm pretty scared. Do you remember how I told you that my name means prayer? Yeah. Well, it's an actual prayer. Maybe you could say it for me. I mean, say it for all of us. I don't know the words. Oh, well. How are we doing up there, 335? We're not bad, Control. You're riding into a storm, so we're going to be relaying a new set of landing coordinates. Copy. Roger. How are the passengers? We've got six dead. Two comatose. Copy that, 335. Stand by for those new coordinates. Over. It's a straight run here, but I'm flying them around the storm. No, uh, you need to get them here as fast as you can. We know what this is. You have to get Conroy to okay that. Oh, forget him. He's on some sort of conspiracy trip. You're freelance, right? No, I work for CDC. I run a lab for them in Los Angeles. I thought you were contract help. What are you talking about? Look, Doc, we're here to do a real specific job. I'm flight control. I don't care about anything else. We don't get to see the big picture, and I don't want to. I land the plane. Then I go home and this whole operation never happened. Those people up there have put their lives in our hands. My job is to bring a plane to a specific set of coordinates. That's all. Tag, those are real people up there. 
What if it was you? Or your family? You really have no idea who we're working for, do you? Where's my plane, Tag? About two minutes from the coast, but I'm flying them around a storm so you can tack on about 20 minutes to their ETA. We need to get them here as soon as possible. Fly them around the storm, Tag. How sure are you? Nearly positive. The first one that died, the drug offenses, it was smuggling. He was also arrested for bringing in archaeological artifacts from Egypt. We found his partner. Where? Dead in the airport washroom. It gets worse. The lab from Hawaii has confirmed a break-in two nights ago. So it's not a weapon. Just a man to do. We got a problem here, Ed. A big one. If it gets out that we tried to cover this thing up, it's only a matter of time before that woman from the CDC puts things together. We don't have a problem. We just can't let them land. Plane crash. It's extreme, but preferable to telling the Joint Chiefs that we thought we'd stumbled on a new viral agent and tried to keep it secret. Bring them down in the ocean. They might already be over land. Do what you have to do. This was your baby. Put it to bed. This is the new flight plan. It's all right. I've already mapped it. Use these coordinates, Tag. This... Three, three, five. Are you ready for your revised flight plan? Go ahead, Control. Follow a heading of zero, four, five degrees. 11 minutes latitude north by 128 degrees. 17 minutes longitude west. Going to zero, four, five degrees, 11 minutes latitude north by 128 degrees, 17 minutes I'd like to talk to you. Longitude west. About what? I need to contact CDC right away. Why? We need the antidote. Menzi C6. The antidote can be here in less than one hour. Why can't you call now? People are dying. We have a responsibility to them. My responsibility lies with the American people. And who's on that plane? The ancient Greeks? You do your job, and I'll do mine. You all right, Jerry? Fine. Okay, in about 100 miles, we're gonna have to climb 5,000 feet to clear those mountains. We're gonna need your help during that climb. There's something wrong here. We're well past that. Terry, climb now! What? Climb! Oh. Shit. We lost them. 335, come in. 335, this is flight control. Do you read? They couldn't navigate the mountains. It's a shame. Do you have an exact location where they went down? It'll take me some time. Get it done as quickly as possible, Tag, please. <sighs> what the hell are you doing? Oh, I'd just like to know who I helped kill.
patient zero. It was him. And that asshole knew it. What? The first to go. The idiot poisoned himself. He was a thief and a smuggler. Guess he picked the wrong thing to steal. It's over. Go home. assholes well Christ grow up wait a minute you're gonna spook me about who we're working for well fuck them no you wait a minute I understand why you're here but why me why the charade I don't know probably because they contacted your group first they would have done that just to cover the bases those people were never meant to live were I don't know I've got to tell someone tell them what they did Doc Laura you. I thought 335 was the only flight on that band. It is. Down! For Christ's sake, hug the mountain! I am! Drafts I can't control. Okay. Just get us down. You think they saw us? I don't know. Completely cleared the spine of the mountains. 335, please come in. Shit. They saw us. Don't answer. 335, we had you there for a sec. Please respond. It's not the same voice. It's the doctor. Yeah, it's a trick. Keep heading south? Yeah. Do you think it could have been another plane? No, it's not possible. And if they crashed, they wouldn't have made a signal. The blip indicated they were heading south. They figured out the coordinates we gave them were wrong. So you did try to kill them? <sighs> All right. I'll help. But it's not going to be easy. They don't think we want to help. Sun's coming up. Adam, Adam, <sighs> listen. Praknin Ajaya, Hamjet Artinen. Lehanar Mojanet. I thought you didn't know the words. I I found them on the net. What? <coughs> How did you get on the net? You've got a browser here. I just used it. You're not gonna get nailed for long distance. How did you get on? Hey, she's on the internet. This computer is a Tetra 8000. Its modem is iridium. You could use it from anywhere. Is that important? Jaya. Does email work with that? Sure. Yes. We can contact the CDC. He did a good thing. Jaya, 
Can you show me how to use this modem? Over here. It's okay. Control. This is 335. This is going to be hard to believe, 335, but it's good to hear from you. Tell them we want to help. I've got the doctor with me. We want to help. My father always told me God helps those who help themselves. <sighs> Listen up, Control. I think it'll work. We'll find out in a couple of minutes. You're on. Wish me luck. Three, three, five. You're just three miles from the landing zone. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. We're ready to land. I'll see you on the ground. Ready, Control. I've got you. You're at 18,000 feet. I want you to turn right 10 degrees. Bearing right 10 degrees. I plan to be leaving soon, Doctor. Yes, I know. But I have something to say to you first. I know you crashed that plane. you think that? Oh, I don't think it. I know it. That plane crashed. Planes do that. Yours could do that. I'm gonna stand up for those people on that plane. Stand up for them? Why not join them? You know, um, I'm not scared of you anymore. I wasn't sure if you were smart or not. You're not. Oh, I'm smart. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm smart enough to know that I, I want my plane to land safely in Los Angeles. This is it. Lower your flaps to 30 degrees. Roger, lowering flaps 30 degrees. Look to your right. There's a lever for your air brakes. I see it. Pull it back. Got it. Your seat belts. Everybody can. Lean forward and place your head between your knees. It's probably gonna be one hell of a landing. Your flight will be leaving for Washington. Why is that? Debriefing. Standard operating procedure. As I'm sure you know, this was a highly classified operation. You'll be, uh... Quiet as a mouse. Well, it's good to have a sense of humor. I hope you have yours. Excuse me? Uh, Ed, I'll have those coordinates shortly. I don't think we'll be needing them. I think they're gonna land. What the hell are you talking about? That plane crashed in the mountains. I'm not lined up. Relax. Turn right, zero, six, zero. Okay. I'm coming in line now. Wait, now, Flair. Flair. Pull back on the control car.
<laughs> We're on the ground. <laughs> Control, thank you for everything. I'm shutting down. Good job, 335. Come on in. We're waiting for you. Yes! We made it! I'm going to introduce a serum right away. Please roll up your sleeves. I'll be giving you an injection. Where's Dr. Chadwick? I'm Chadwick. I'm Dr. Yamada. It's good to see you. I'm glad you made it. Well, thank you. CDC is setting up cuts in the hangar. We'll lead you for more treatment. Okay, thank you. How is he? He's fine. Hey. Hey. You know, you never told me where you lived. Where do you live? Los Angeles. I think I'll move there. Good work, Dr. Chadwick. Thank you. We'd like you to come inside for more blood work. The air feels pretty great out here. I'd really like to meet the guy who landed us. Tag, this is Terry. Hi! Nice landing. Thank you. You know, it was a full moon last night. Yeah? Weird things happen when the moon is full. 